Yes, that's right. I am trying to beat Stardew Valley without leaving the farm. We are already smashing our way into year two, which means if you haven't seen the first one, then you've got some catching up to do. The rules for this challenge are very simple. Just don't leave the farm. However, I do give myself one day of freedom per year to spend the gold I've made and do whatever I want around the valley. If you do end up enjoying the video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we get into the video, I have a very exciting announcement, and that is my first merch drop. I'm so happy with how they've come out. We've got padding with Poxio hoodies, Kiwi sweatshirts, and Poxolotl shirts for everyone watching. Links for both the merch website and the artist's Twitter will be in the description, so you should go and check them out. Okay, now we can get back into the video. Here we are again on Lonely Farm, fresh from yesterday's wonderful day of freedom and shopping around the town. I'm also very glad my new beard was accepted by the majority of you who watched the first video. I'll admit the first day back on Lonely Farm was a bit moody thanks to the downpouring of rain, but that couldn't stop my excitement of the brand new year ahead of me. Weaving my way through the grove of trees that now cluttered my beach farm, I got to scything weeds in hopes of getting some mixed seeds, and uh, I was severely disappointed. But hey, big as can't be choosers and I'll take whatever I can get. I continued to clean up the farm by getting rid of a few trees beside Jack the Scarecrow and that was so I could plant down some fruit trees. If you remember at the end of the last video I was able to purchase a few fruit trees including an orange tree, peach tree and pomegranate tree. And purposefully I bought trees that would only grow in summer or fall since they take a whole season to grow. See I'm not just a pretty face. Afterwards, I used some copper I'd bought from Clint's to make my first furnace and planted down my two mix seeds next to my trusty watchman Jack. You could say I'm quite the decorator and judging by the paths I placed around my fruit trees, I'd have to agree with you. Anyway, I stood in the rain for a while smelting copper ore into bars before making some room beside my fruit trees to plant down one of each tree seed, which I of course decorated with some more paths. I then turned my copper bars into tappers with some spare wood I had left over and this is so I can be getting oak, resin, maple syrup, and pine tar when I eventually put them onto my grown trees. Like I said, I have to make money in any way that I can, and this is the best I've got so far. I woke up the next day to a message that no Stardew Valley player ever wants to wake up to. So unfortunately, despite my beautiful decorations, I had to remove the paths for now. But don't you worry, they'll come back, I promise. I then took a moment to act like that one time I got lost in the supermarket as a kid and couldn't find my mum for a solid five minutes, but when I finally regained my senses, I decided to make myself a chest and find myself a spot to kick back, relax, and do a bit of fishing. Now that I had a fishing rod in my hands, it not only gives me a great money-making strategy, but also something to do. I'm sure you're aware that last year was all about chopping trees and selling wood, which gets old very quickly. Quickly. So I'm sure that won't happen again with fishing, right? But nonetheless, I was excited to have more to do this year. So I spent the day here listening to the sound of nature and reeling in fish. And by the time I called it in, I'd done pretty well for myself. I had even got some mixed seeds from a treasure chest. So, of course, I planted them down beside my other two crops and gave them all a well-deserved watering. It also then occurred to me that I'd forgotten about my mushroom cave. So I paid a quick visit to gather my daily bunch of mushrooms, which to me is just free gold. And to finish the day off, I spent the rest of my energy clearing out some tree clutter from around the farm before getting some much-needed sleep. I was right out of the gate to work the following morning, watering my crops and collecting up the mushrooms out of my mushroom cave. I then did something some would call heinous, uncalled for even. I got rid of my tree experiment. I know, I know, I know. You may have just thrown your phone or laptop across the room and to that I'd say fair enough. But if I'm being honest, I was on a mission to clean up the farm slowly but surely so that I could build it back up bigger and better. So unfortunately, it had to go. However, it was going to take up all my energy and some as I found out pretty quickly. So instead I took a lap around the farm to chop weeds and dig up an artifact spot before heading to bed. Back to work I went the next morning watering my crops, collecting mushrooms from the cave and I finished off removing all of the trees from the tree farm. I then got to removing all of the paths I had placed where Coco, my beautiful canine friend, kept me company as I worked. Aww. 
you know, despite being called Lonely Farm, I don't think I feel that lonely, right? Okay, well, I guess one of my two friends is a dog and the other is a scarecrow, which actually might make me insane, so I guess I still am lonely, but I'm not too sure. Well, insanity aside, I spent what energy I had left clearing out more trees from around the farm. It was the 6th today and I had fallen into a nice morning routine of watering my crops and collecting mushrooms, which took up about 40 minutes of my day, so what was I going to do for the other 20 hours left over? If you had said fishing, then you'd be right. I guess there's nothing much to do apart from fishing. I did get quite lucky today with hauling up some treasure chests. I managed to get some more geodes, two emeralds, and a bit more copper ore. I took a mid-afternoon break to sort my inventory and stick some iron into the furnace, before heading back to the shoreline to cast out for a bit longer. By the time I finished fishing, it was getting dark, and I don't think I've stayed up this late in months. The next morning I was happy to report a single parsnip had grown to harvest, so after collecting my daily lot of mushrooms, I was able to add it to my selling chest, which serves its purpose exactly how it sounds. I put everything I want to sell at the end of the season in this pink chest, because if I don't entertain myself, I'll go nuts. And then it was back to the fishing grind for the rest of the day. Ah, good morning Jack. Now listen here, buddy boy, just because you can't move doesn't mean I'm letting you off easy. I've given you crops to protect, a campfire to keep you warm, you do your job and we won't have a problem. The day I see you missing is the day you'll see the bottom of the trash can. Ah, oh, we have our ups and downs, but Jack is a really good listener. During my usual crop watering this morning, I was able to pick a ready to harvest potato, and I decided to get rid of my parts around the other trees. I'm quite honestly not too sure why I did this, but hey, I'm sure there was a good reason. For the rest of the day, I went around chopping down trees from around the farm. I know I said I wanted to clear all of it, but I might as well wait until they grow into big trees so I can get the most wood out of it. Just to the south of the farm, I was delighted to see my first washed up box for the first time this year, and I got to perform my sacred box dance. I was rewarded with a few cherry bombs and uh, Pogseal, where are you going with them? Please don't tell me he's gonna blow up the tree, okay he's blowing up the trees. Well to be fair that could have gone a lot worse, so maybe I am going nuts? The following day was, I'll admit, a bit more normal than yesterday. I was able to add a few more potatoes to my selling chest, and then it was back to fishing for the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, that's about it. However, overnight, I did hit level 4 fishing. And that is particularly exciting because I had been waiting for this exact moment. You see, at level 4 fishing, you unlock the crafting recipe to make recycling machines, and I had bought enough iron to make two of them. I had planned to make them since fishing on the beach farm yields a lot of rubbish, so having them nearby as I fish will be great. They don't produce the greatest materials, but to get refined quartz, cloth, coal, and some iron every now and again is something I am definitely not complaining about. Although, I don't think I was quite prepared for how many torches I'd make. Of course, being a decorator by trade, I laid out some pathways by my fishing area just to make it look pretty. I also made a second chest to store all of my recycling machine produce, but as I'll quickly find out, it proves to be pretty useless. And finally to finish the day, I swung my axe at some trees for a while. Now, I realized as I woke up the next day that I'd been neglecting cocoa a little bit, and I decided to do something about it. So of course, as a reminder to all of you dog owners out there, if you want your dog to grow big and strong, then make sure to water your dog sufficiently. They'll love it, I swear. Today was filled with more tree chopping and uh, that's about it. So the next morning I woke up and checked my mailbox where I was rudely reminded of another valley festival that I could not attend. You'd think after a year of not showing up they'd get the message, but they seemed to be very persistent. I mixed it up today and went back to fishing the day away at my little spot. However as I finished up for the day I realized the impracticality of my recycling machine produce chest and decided to get rid of it and move the fishing chest up a space. And then I did something I never thought I'd do. I reorganized nice the chests and change the pink selling chest into the red selling chest. Now don't get me wrong, I do love pink. I think I was just after a visual change. There's nothing much to say about the 13th, all I did was water my cauliflower, collect mushrooms and forage around the farm. Isn't that right Jack? I'm sure he likes me. Oh, and I also chopped down some more trees.
Dear Diary, it's been a while since I made my last entry. Despite being alone here, I've managed to make it work. I now have fruit trees, a fishing rod, and a cave full of mushrooms. Although I'm pretty sure Pierre said that I smelled bad as I walked out of a shop on my one shopping day, and that hurt my feelings a little bit. Life here isn't easy, but it's getting better each day. Jack has been on my nerves for a while now, but I don't think that'll ever go away. Anyway, I better go and collect some mushrooms and do some fishing. Signed, Poxiel. I was surprised the next day to see Emily at my door. I'm not too sure what brought her here despite my lack of presence around town. Perhaps it was to mock me by saying the farm looks great. Emily, we both know that isn't true. But it was because I had some cloth. Not sure how she found that out, but she offered me the ability to use her sewing machine. And while that's a kind offer, it's an offer I'll probably never take her up on. Today was actually the first day of salmon berry season, so I reserved the day to go around the farm picking salmon berries off of the bushes. It also helped having a high foraging level, which let me pick two berries per bush rather than one. And of course I finished the day chopping trees. The following day was the exact same, except this time instead of finishing the day cutting trees, I finished it by the shoreline casting my line out into the ocean catching fish. You know, you gotta mix it up sometimes. However, as I was fishing, Coco decided to spend some quality time with me and keep me company while I fished. And don't get me wrong, Coco is the absolute cutest. But if you could just stop that tail smacking for like just one minute, I'd really appreciate it. It was the 17th and I was back to collecting freshly grown mushrooms and freshly grown salmon berries. As I was taking a lap around the farm, I found myself quite disappointed in the lack of boxes so far. I was itching to get my sacred box dance back out again, but alas it wasn't meant to be today. So instead I got comfy and fished the day away. Today was the final day of salmon berry season, so I went around picking the last berries left for me on the farm. I then spent my energy on clearing out more trees for the rest of the day. The next morning I woke up feeling a bit guilty. I'd been a bit harsh on Jack. He's only been trying to do the best that he can. I blame it on the lack of human interaction, so to show my appreciation for him, I stood next to Jack to show him I care about his interests too. We're best friends. But just for good measure I tried to psych him out. I thought some space between us would be good, so I retreated to my fishing spot for the rest of the day. The following day, my axe was back out and trees were falling to the ground left, right and center, which is about all that I achieved today, and I headed to bed at a whimsical 10am. For the next few days, I put my focus onto fishing my troubles away. I also thought I'd push myself to catch as many fish as I could so that at the end of the season, I'd have a healthy paycheck for all of my efforts. So as the days rolled on, I potted over to my shoreline spot each morning and cast my line out into the water over and over again. Oh, and I also got these cool snazzy blue shoes from a treasure chest. Not an important detail, but I thought I'd share nonetheless. On the 27th I took the day off fishing because quite frankly I was over it and decided to spend the morning checking my farm for any extra things to sell. I even got to do my sacred box dance. I then burnt my energy chopping trees for a little bit of extra cash before heading to bed feeling very excited. And here we are, the final day of spring. And more importantly, money time. For good luck, I gave Coco a pat and then went to raid my selling chest. I tossed everything I'd been hoarding up until this point into the shipping bin, and then I did the exact same thing with my fishing chest. It took me a couple of trips to get all of the fish into the shipping bin, but once I had, I gave Jack a little smooch on the cheek, and I headed to bed. And this is it, the total for spring year two is... 35,674 gold. Everyone make sure to slip, slop, slap and rap cause it's summertime. Is that just a New Zealand thing or does everyone do that? Anyway, I started my day wandering around the farm chopping weeds in hopes of getting some mixed seeds. I didn't get many but the three I had total I planted down beside Jack to keep an eye on anyway. I then put my axe to work again chopping trees down for wood, took a quick break to collect up my mushrooms and finished the first day of summer fishing down at the beach. Now that I had some crops back in my life, I was happy to say the next morning began with some watering of crops, and shortly after I dug up my third prehistoric rib artifact. To my surprise, two of my three trees had fully grown, so I slapped a tapper on each one. I then gave Coco a pat and decided a good 
I then gave Coco a pat and decided a good use of my time should be spent fishing, so that's exactly what I did. I'll also say that during my first shopping day, I completely forgot to donate artifacts and open geodes like I had planned to. In all honesty, I think I just got too excited at the thought of freedom, but this time I'll try my absolute best to remember. Also, I was having an absolute nightmare trying to catch anything today, so like any good person, I quit and moped my way to bed. I have some exciting news! My fruit trees have fully grown, which means that every day I'll be able to pick a peach and an orange to add to my selling chest. From selling wood to selling freshly grown fruit, look at us go. Adding to the good news, now that my trees had grown, I was able to put my paths back down that I sadly had to remove a month ago. And taking it one step further, I thought it'd be a fun idea to add a gravel path around the outside. I've never used gravel paths before, but I was quite happy with how it turned out. The following morning I was back to routine, watering crops, picking fruit and collecting mushrooms from the cave. And afterwards I thought it'd be best to put my lumberjack hat back on and chop trees for the rest of the day. From my three mixed seeds, two were wheat, so I was happy to scythe them down and receive two to add to my chest. And after picking my fruits and collecting mushrooms, I was back to the shoreline to fish the day away once again. Ah, another beautiful morning for what? uh, Jack? Okay, where'd he go? Maybe I think this time I took it a bit too far. Jack! No, he's not here. He's not here by the forageables area either. Where could the scarecrow have gone? Jack! Oh, there you are! You silly Billy, how'd you get all the way over here? It certainly wasn't me moving him to create any sort of extra narrative for the video. Alrighty, Jack, I'm taking you back to your job. Here we go. Now I'm planting down some more plants here to make you feel important and that you have a job to do, alright? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, god damn it, Jack. Where could he be this time? Oh, there he is, down on the pier. Is there something you wanted to tell me, Jack? Alrighty, Jack, here you go, you're home again now. Well, after that debacle with Jack, I thought I'd take inspiration from my first year's experiments and aggressively pour love onto this tree in hopes of making it grow faster. And then I spent the day fishing. I even got a single piece of iridium and some gold from treasure chests, so hey, that's pretty good. The next day was back to the usual, picking fruit, collecting mushrooms, and watering crops. I did, however, get to perform another sacred box dance. And yes, I was more responsible with the cherry bombs this time. And then it was back to the fishing grind. And no, I didn't get any fun treasure chests this time. The rain was pouring and the old man was snoring on the 9th. My oak tree had finally grown, so I slapped my last tapper on that before draining my energy today, chopping down trees and collecting some forage from around the farm, which is about all I did. Some more hay was ready for harvest this morning and I was happy to add whatever I could to the selling chest. After my morning routine, I felt obliged to continue my pathing efforts, so I whipped up some more gravel paths and extended some of them past the farmhouse and was very careful not to accidentally leave the farm. I wasn't quite aware that gravel paths make this noise, but look, I'll do my best with whatever I can get my hands on, so this is as good as it gets for now. Also, it's the same sound as pigs finding truffles, so you can imagine I got very confused sometimes walking over the paths. For now though, it was back to, you guessed it, fishing. It was all the same same on the 11th, but today I was able to prove my word of promise and I made a bigger and better tree farm. After laying out all of the tree seeds, I got to placing down stone paths in between the seeds and wooden paths for the rows between them. But of course I wasn't quite done there. I very stupidly splurged the remaining stone I had on gravel paths, which I placed all around the outside of the tree farm. For what little I have, it's not too bad, and it'll act as my wood supply for the foreseeable future. So when trees grow, I'll chop them down and replace them with a new seed. The next morning I was able to harvest my last mixed seed crop, a lonely radish. Sorry Jack, I guess you're out of a job now. And after my familiar route around the farm, collecting fruit and pine tar and collecting my mushrooms, I ended my day fishing. You may notice it's been a couple of days. Did you miss out on much? Nah, not really. I wasn't used to so much hard work that I just ended up sleeping for three days straight. But it was nice to see my fruit tree so full of fruit. While running around the farm on my morning jog, I was happy to report another box was spotted. So you know what that means. 
I was also feeling brave and decided to eat the soggy burger with no consequences. Glad to know I won't be having to visit Harvey's today, although I wonder if my farmhouse has a toilet. So from here on out things get pretty boring for the rest of summer, in the sense that a lot of what I did was the same old thing over and over again. If I wasn't doing my usual morning routine, then I was either cutting down trees or fishing trying to catch fish to sell or sleeping, because never leaving the farm is so much hard work. Also somewhere in there I managed to reach level 5 fishing, and I even got to level 9 by the time I went to bed on the 21st, which to be fair is not a bad effort. So to save both you and me from the monotony of every day being like Groundhog Day, here we are on the final day of the season. Fittingly, I woke up to some sort of explosion, I'll find out what that was later, but I was very excited at the prospect of my monthly profit. I finished up picking the last of my fruit and mushrooms from the cave, chopped down some trees in the tree farm, and being the nature lover that I am, replanted the seeds. Just forget about that whole cherry bomb incident, and uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. And I found the reason for said explosion in the night. There's no way I'm moving this big old thing, so I guess it's just going to be here forever. I then filled my inventory full of sellable goods and shoved them into the shipping bin. I even had to make two trips, and that, my friends, is a good sign. Again, I did the same thing with the fishing chest and poured all of my fresh and not so fresh fish into the shipping bin. But of course, being the end of summer and despite my reluctance to stay up because I want my profits now, I did stay up to celebrate the Moonlight Jellies Festival in my own way, since you know I couldn't really join the real thing. And if you stay very, very quiet, you can hear my favourite song in the distance. But with that out the way, our profit total for summer is... 44,728 gold. Welcome everyone to my favourite season of all time, Fall. What do you reckon, Jack? Exactly what I was thinking. Although I'm sad to see my peach and orange tree without its fruit, however, I do have my pomegranate tree. And of course our trusty mushroom cave. But it was time for me to roll up my sleeves and get to work. Fall is going to be all about fishing and that is all I'm going to do. Well, apart from collecting fruit and mushrooms, of course. But that would be boring to watch day by day, so cue the montage. Well, it's a very gloomy day here on the final day of fall. It is safe to say I am absolutely sick of fishing and I hope to never spend that long fishing ever again. But I am ready to see if my hard work has paid off, so I got to emptying my selling chest into the shipping bin and lugged over all of my fish, which included 52 sardines by the way. I don't think I've ever seen that many sardines in my life. So after quickly dumping all of them into the shipping bin, I was ready to see the number. And our total for fall is... 54,828 gold. Thank God all of that fishing paid off. There's a chill in the air and a smell of Evelyn's cookies wafting in from the town, which must mean it's winter time. Now this winter season didn't come with too much excitement, unfortunately. I was chomping at the bit to get into town and spend all of my gold. So to pass the time I spent every day collecting mushrooms and forageables from around the farm. Mondays and Thursdays I reserved for a bit of fishing and quite honestly I spent a lot of the season in hibernation sleeping for days on end. So just for you I'm gonna save us all a bit of time. One hour later. And here we are on the last day of winter. Oh, that was quick. I have spent the last month grinding away trying to collect as much as I can. At least I just skipped the boring parts, unlike that one Minecraft YouTuber who says they just did some building off camera and they've built a whole palace or something. Any anyway, I'm getting off topic. I dumped everything I collected into the shipping bin for the season and did the same thing again for our little fishies I'd caught. And heading to bed for the final time this year, our profits were... 
24,102 gold. Yeah! And here comes the moment I've been dreading. Grandpa came and visited me in my slumber tonight, only to roast not only me, but the farm, saying that he hopes I'm enjoying my new life, which is all that matters. Lonely Farm was in my hands now, and I had a slight feeling that Grandpa was rolling in his grave. It's once again time for a bit of retail therapy, and after the year I've had, I am definitely ready for it. So out I went into the Valley of Stardew, ready to tick things off of my shopping list. My first order of business was to pay Willy a visit and to get myself the Iridium Rod. Since I'm going to be fishing a lot, I thought I'd get a rod that can handle it all. And with that, I ticked off my first item. The next order of business was to visit our newly acquired friend Morris at Jojumart, where I purchased the first of five community development projects. I obviously picked the greenhouse since this year I'm planning on delving into the exciting world of farming. Soon after seeing Morris, I scurried over to Pierre's where I purchased myself the last backpack upgrade and one of each tree sapling. It's no offense to my other fruit trees, but with the greenhouse, they'll grow all year round, which I can hopefully turn into jam with preserves jars. But for now, there's another two items ticked off the list. Heading up to the mountains, I popped into Robin's where I bought some stone and wood so I could commission a coop to be built on my farm. With that dino egg from my lucky fall treasure chest, I'll be able to incubate them in a big coop. So unfortunately, it'll be useless this year, but I'm already planning for the year after that. I then bought some extra stones since I used up the rest of mine making gravel pathways. And I ticked off another two things from my list. Back to Pierre's, I went to buy some bean starters for the greenhouse. It's really the only crop in spring that produces a crop after it's matured, so in the greenhouse, it'll keep going all year long. I then hurried back over to Clint's to load up on some ores, which I'm hoping will help me this year to make some money making machines. And that's everything ticked off my list. But if you think I'm done there, then you'd be sorely mistaken. I quickly dumped everything back off at home before dashing back into town where I returned to Clint's. I finally remembered to open my geodes, and surprisingly, I had quite a lot. So after a mass geode opening session, I popped over to Gunther in the museum and donated what I could. Which honestly must have been quite the shock seeing a guy you've never met donating a whole bunch of items. Anyway, I gathered up all of my rewards for my donating efforts and headed back to the farm. So there you have it. Another year spent stuck on Lonely Farm has really just flown by. I'm excited to see what we get up to in the third year. But for that, my friends, you'll just have to wait for the next episode. If you did like this one, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video so I know you want to see more Stardew Valley content like this. And if not for me, then do it for Jack, because I think he'd like that. But as always, you're all wonderful people, so have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching. <laughs>